Wow. All right, I'll admit it. I'm kind of into resin 3D printing now. But how did I get here? from just a couple of videos ago where I said that resin 3D printing kind of intimidated me. And how much of that is due to the Hallett one from Creality that my friends at Creex 3D on Amazon gave me? Well, to answer that, I'm gonna have to go back a little bit. Now, before we do though, I need to make this disclaimer. Creex 3D didn't pay me for this review other than letting me keep this machine for my evaluation. But this wasn't my first experience with resin 3D printing. I've been trying out resin 3D printers for actually some years now. It's just I've never told anybody about it because my experiences weren't good. I tried out a resin 3D printer even before the Elegoo Mars got to be a big thing and it was at a time when the tools weren't very well developed, when the ideas just were very, very rough and the experience wasn't good. I was impressed that even back then, those 3D printers had Wi-Fi delivery and fancy touchscreens and easy interfaces, but a lot of those features, especially the Wi-Fi delivery, I couldn't take advantage of. I do my 3D printing in one of two places, either inside the house where I have air conditioning and Wi-Fi, or out here in the corner of the garden shed where I don't have any of those things. And resin 3D printing still uses a toxic resin when it's uncured and I have children. So the resin 3D printing couldn't go into the house where I can take advantage of the Wi-Fi and other things like that. But more than that, resin 3D printing just never really, I don't know, gelled with me. See, when I heard about FDM 3D printing, even before I had one, I had in my mind a hundred projects that I could use for it. The use cases for it just came so easily, but with resin 3D printing, nothing really was sparking my imagination or, or getting me going on it. Not to mention the current drama with, uh, what is it called? Cthulhu box that's all of a sudden going closed source and paid to use. I mean, yeah, who wants to get in on that? But I still felt like I needed to get into resin 3D printing. I'm a 3D printing professor and I shouldn't turn my back on a technology especially one that has such incredible promise and incredible detail capabilities as resin 3D printing. So I was still always looking for a resin 3D printer that would get me excited and into it. And then I got the Hallett One from Creality. And you know, I'll tell you the truth. I can't really tell you what it is about this printer that made me at ease. Maybe it's this cute little mascot that they have when you first turn it on, dancing on the screen and just making you feel good. I mean, look at that guy, he is so darn cute. Maybe it's the fact that the 3D printer has controls right on it for material settings like layer exposure time. So if you ever need to change anything or fine tune a resin, you don't need to go back to your 3D <clears throat> printer and try again, just Try a couple of settings on your printer and try it again, which since I don't have Wi-Fi means a lot less back and forth for me. And did I mention this particular 3D printer is Cthulhu box free? Now, one of the first things that I learned about this 3D printer was that the slicer that comes on the USB stick from Creality, you shouldn't use. Go ahead and just load lychee. It's a much better slicer. Although I was kind of surprised. This is the first time I've seen and used a slicer that had embedded ads in it. I'll tell you what, the world of resin 3D printing is, is honestly a whole new world that I'm I'm just not used to yet. In fact, that was kind of the feeling in general about resin 3D printer. I felt like I was going back to the beginning, to, to not knowing anything about what I was doing and having to learn it all over again. And I don't hate that feeling, I'll tell you the truth, but it did mean that, well, let me give you an example. I have here 
a simple little print. It's just a very flat object that I wanted to 3D print, but everybody that I saw online said, if you have something with a flat bottom, you should tilt it 45 degrees and put a bunch of supports under it. And I was like, really? I can't, I can't just print this flat to the build plate? So I went out on Twitter and I asked people, hey, what should I do? And, and everybody said every possible answer. They said, go ahead, print it flat to the build plate. They said, lift it up and tilt it 45 degrees. They said, put it on its edge. And I thought, fine, I'll try them all and see what happens. This one was printed flat on the bed and it came out just fine. Honestly, nothing really to be excited about. This one was printed at 45 degrees to the bed and had a big raft of supports on it that I had to remove when it was done. Those peeled off just fine, but you can still see the little nubbins where they interacted. It's not bad, but it's fine. It works. This one I printed on its edge, but lifted up from the build plate so that it had a raft of supports under it. And I'm honestly surprised. This is what we would consider bridging in FDM 3D printing, and it came out really looking very good. But just for completeness, I printed one standing up on the bed directly, and oddly, I can feel a little bit of a ridge on this one where it intersected the bed. So I guess elephant foot is still a thing for resin 3D printing. So from this experience, I learned why people like to put things on supports in resin 3D printing. It really does an actually excellent job of building things up, even though I have had a couple of experiences where sometimes for no explainable reason, the print decides to stick to the film instead of the bed. So I guess the rules about using supports really aren't that different for resin 3D printing and for FDM 3D printing. So I guess I'm not starting over from ground zero. I just have to figure out what skills transfer still. Of course, there's a number of things that don't come in the box that you're gonna need to get for resin 3D printing. Number one of which is more resin. They usually don't ship the resin with 3D printer because this stuff is toxic. So you're gonna need to order that separately. And you're gonna want some paper towels. Uh, you might already have paper towels. Just grab a roll and keep it near the 3D printer because you're gonna be wiping off a lot of spilled resin all the time. And of course, you don't want that resin to touch your skin, so go ahead and get yourself a box of gloves. You can get these at the hardware store. Nitrile gloves are the ones that don't cause people allergic reactions with latex, but uh, if, if you're fine with latex, whatever, you're just gonna need some gloves. And you're gonna want some isopropyl alcohol. This stuff isn't hard to get. A lot of people like to just use the 71%. I get the 91% and then just water it down a little bit. That's how they make them 71%. Just, just dilute it a little bit and you'll be fine. And you're gonna need some funnels. You probably already have funnels, but you're gonna want funnels specific for the 3D printer because you don't want this resin on your food stuffs or other things. And you're going to want some spare plastic containers for keeping the isopropyl alcohol that you're, you know, reusing and cleaning up that you're really using the funnel to put into their place. I've also found a set of these uh, strainers to be real useful, especially if you can find one that fits inside the funnel so that as you're pouring out the resin into hopefully a different container, but one that is UV protected, that you can strain out the chunky bits as you're doing that. So funnel and strainer for this, what else? Oh yeah, a couple more things. Metal scraper, you probably got a plastic scraper in with your 3D printer. If you didn't, you probably want one of these. It's really good for just getting rid of the bubbles before you start 3D printing, but a metal scraper, I, I just, the plastic one doesn't remove the prints from the print bed as well as a metal one does. And this one didn't come with a metal scraper, so I had to get that. And you're going to want a resin curing box. I got this one on Amazon and I really dig it because it just does this automatic spinny thing. It's got the UV lights in it. I think I might need to get some Mylar to put on the ground to make it more reflective, but otherwise this was cheap and easy. Of course, any cubic has a wash, rinse, and curing station that 
is all in one that maybe you want to get that instead of this, but you are going to need something to cure your prints because if you decide to rely on the sun, that will be the week that is constantly cloudy and if not cloudy, rainy, and there won't be any sun to cure your 3D prints. So you're going to need this solution. Of course, there are DIY solutions to this as well. So you're still going to need it. Uh, depending on your application, a UV light so that you can cure the resin. These are, it's kind of hard to find one that's at the right wavelength though. I'm not even sure that this one's the right one. I'll let you know. And if it works, I'll, I'll put a link to this in the description. Silicone mat. Silicone mats are great. Uh, this is a wham bam silicone mat. You can of course just buy rolls of silicone on, on Amazon. You're going to want to put this down under your 3D printer to keep your your workspace clean because you don't want that resin spilling on your table. So you're gonna need you're gonna need a resin mat. Uh, you know, I suppose I should have made this into its own video, like the X things that you're going to need if you're gonna get into resin 3D printing. Oh well. And the thing is, at this point, this little 3D printer that can really only print little things has sprawled and taken up more space than the largest of my 3D printers that can print really, really big things. So I finally got the resin and I've got the materials and I've got the mess that I need to do resin 3D printing. But what I don't have is the killer application. The thing about resin printing that I could be excited about. That was until I tried a little bit of this transparent resin from Creality. Now, the first thing that I liked about this resin was that it came with a very useful little pamphlet that gave the settings for this resin and various different 3D printers, including the Hallett One. As soon as I had this and I could with confidence set my settings on the 3D printer and those settings, it ends up works for most of the other resins. I felt pretty good about using this 3D printer, pretty confident that things were going to work out. But then I saw the prints that it produced and they were indeed transparent. Now this resin, when it cured, kind of turned a, a amber color. It looks like something that you would expect to see a mosquito trapped in. Actually, that gives me ideas too. I've tried doing transparent printing in the past with FDM 3D printing and it had some complications, but this, this just went straight for transparent immediately. And I had some applications in mind for this right away. Now I do have this other clear resin that claims that it won't yellow. I haven't experimented with it, but if this works and if the other things work that I want to do with it, oh my goodness, what this technology could do now. Now I'm excited for resin 3D printing. And sure, it can do amazing detail models. It can do really, really cool minis and things like this. But it's this ability to do transparent, even, even semi-transparent prints that, oh, I'm looking forward to showing you guys some ideas that I have for this. So there you have it. How I went from being concerned and intimidated by resin 3D printing to being really excited about the possibilities that it presents. I wanna thank my friends at Creex 3 d for giving me the Hallett One. And if you would like to try out the Hallett One from Creality, they have a special discount for me that is good until the end of the year. You can find that in the description and I hope that you'll check it out. Well, that's the end of the video, but wait, before you go, while you're checking out this cool thing posted by one of you on the What You Making channel on my Discord, why don't you open up the cards and see what deep dive into the topics of this video you can do. And this is really cool. Yeah, I really enjoy it when people connect with me on social media. That's why I've got links to all the socials in the description and I hope you'll check them out. I've also got a Patreon which you can check out here and I'll tell you a little secret about the suggested videos. This is the one that YouTube thinks that you'll like. 
This is the one, though, that I think you'll like. Which one of us is right? There's only one way to know for sure. Gotta watch them both. And remember, safety first, because I really do care about you. And see you next time.